our GSK Science in the Summer Chemistry is Everywhere series. My name is Eleanor, and I work for the Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, which is a division of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Today, we're gonna to start off with a demonstration and then move into an activity where you can really dig into something familiar and see how it uses chemistry. Before we get started, I wanna make sure that you have everything you need. So, you should have two diapers, different brands or different sizes. You should have two plastic bags. Now I've labeled my diapers one and two, and I've also labeled my plastic bags one and two, so I can keep them straight. You should have a spoon of some sort, a pair of scissors, two bowls, which are also labeled, and some water. Now I also got a couple of measuring spoons just because I have these and it'll help me make more precise measurements. But if you don't have any measuring spoons at home, don't worry, you can use whatever spoon you have. All right, so like I said, our theme this year is chemistry is everywhere. You may have learned in school that everything is made up of tiny, tiny particles called atoms. And you can think of these sort of like beads that can be strung together into larger particles, which we call molecules. So for example, right here, I have a few different types of molecules. So for example, this is a water molecule with one oxygen and two hydrogens. So this one with two oxygens and one carbon is carbon dioxide, that's what we breathe out. Now imagine taking a lot of these little molecules and stringing them together to make one huge molecule. A chain of patterned molecules that looks something like this. This is a special kind of molecule called a polymer. And today we're going to be exploring polymers because they have all kinds of interesting properties. Now you actually have polymers all around you right now. Look around if you have anything that's made of plastic, or if you've got hair, or if you have, um, this is a nylon molecule, a nylon polymer, which may be in the clothes you're wearing. Spider silk, all of those are polymers. You even eat polymers. So when you eat starchy foods like potatoes or pasta or bread, those are polymers that you're digesting and getting energy from. Now polymers have some really interesting properties. For example, spider silk is really, really strong. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite polymers. This is something called sodium polyacrylate, and it looks a little bit like salt or sugar. It's just a little white powder. But watch what happens when I add some water to it. It's growing and it's fluffing up and taking up way more space and there's no more water left in it. So it's really fluffy now, almost like snow. In fact, this is a special kind of polymer called instant snow that people use in making movies whenever they can't get real snow. All right, I wanna go ahead and do that again. So I've got another little bit of sodium polyacrylate right here. Again, that's this polymer. And I'm gonna add some water to it again. All right. Only this time it didn't make snow. Instead it made a thick gel that's sticking to the inside of my cup. So I might have played a little trick. This is still the same kind of polymer called sodium polyacrylate, but the molecules are arranged just a tiny bit differently. So instead of getting light and fluffy like our instant snow, it became a thick gel that just absorbed all the water. In fact, this kind of sodium polyacrylate can absorb up to 800 times its weight in water. This makes it really useful for some things. For example, you might mix it in with your soil so it traps water and releases it when the plants need them but it's also useful for some other things. All of us produce certain liquids, right? And we generally know what to do when we produce those liquids. We go to the restroom. But some people are not able to hold their liquids. And so 
we have diapers. Yes, diapers have sodium polyacrylate in them. That's this polymer that can trap all of those liquids. So now we're going to move on to the experiment part of this video. And what we're going to do is take a look at these diapers, see how they work, and which ones maybe work better than others. So the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and take a look at your diapers, the two diapers, and make a note of anything that seems different between the two. Are they different sizes? Do they have different patterns? Do they feel different? Is one softer than the other? This is gonna affect how comfortable it is to wear, remember. Maybe you open it up and take a look at how they fasten, how they close. You've got these little flaps that wrap around. Does one of them stick better than the other? So you don't want your diaper falling off. So take a note of all these things, and if you have some paper with you, write them down so you remember. Just remember to keep track of which one is diaper one and which one is diaper two. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and look at what's inside the diaper. So open it up, and you'll see that there's a layer of cotton, and underneath that layer of cotton, we've got some sodium polyacrylate. That's that powdered polymer. So we need to cut open the diaper to get to it. So I've drawn lines on this diaper to show you exactly where to cut. You wanna find the back of the diaper. That's the side with these two flaps that will fasten it. And you wanna cut right across the top. Once you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and cut down the sides. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut across the top of this diaper, right along those dotted lines. And I'm making sure I cut into this um, thicker part of the diaper because up here there's no sodium polyacrylate you can tell because it's very thin so now that I've cut across the top I'm just gonna put this over here and cut right down the edge of the diaper the sides now you might find it easier to pull up these elastic flaps first and then cut down the sides because we're just trying to get rid of this elastic because it's just gonna get in our way so again I'm just gonna cut right down and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just getting the elastic off. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up this little flap to make it easier for myself. Cut all the way down. All right, and now I just have this other side to do. You can see how now the diaper is really unfolding so we can get to those crystals, the sodium polyacrylate. All right. So now we have really the meat of the diaper, and this is what's there to catch all of the liquid. You know, you had the elastic on the side to keep everything tight together, but this is the important part. We need to go ahead and separate it so that we can get to the sodium polyacrylate, those polymer crystals inside. So if you reach up to the top, you can start to pull apart the layers in this diaper. Now you might notice that there's an outer layer that's like a plastic, that's the patterned layer. And this is also a polymer, just like all plastics, and that's there to catch any leaks, right? But that's not really what we're interested in. You can't really get to the crystals there. So then if you go to the inside, you'll notice that there's kind of a webbing and this just holds everything together. If you pull the webbing apart even more, you'll find some cotton that helps absorb um, any of those liquids. But again, that's not the sodium polyacrylate. That's not the polymer we're interested in. What we want is right in the middle of those two layers. If you hold it up, you can see that there's a thin layer with the sodium polyacrylate crystals in the middle. And we need to go ahead and find a way to break apart those two layers. And you might have to mess with it for a minute and that's okay. You're just gonna go ahead and tear at it until you can get those two layers separated. And you'll know when you do that because the crystals will start to come out and you'll be able to really see them. So again, they look kind of like sugar or salt. They're a little bit sticky because they've been attached to the, these layers but you should really be able to feel them and you'll, you'll know when you get to those sodium polyacrylate crystals. Okay, so once you've got those layers separated, you're just gonna go ahead and pull the diaper apart all the way from top to bottom. Now it might start to rip a little bit. 
to the cotton layer, and that's okay. Just try to keep it as intact as you can. But you can see that even mine's ripping a little bit over here, and that's fine. But remember that what we're really interested in is the sodium polyacrylate, those polymer crystals, not the cotton. So I'm almost done pulling this apart. And now comes the fun part where we have to get all of these crystals out, even though they're stuck to the diaper. So that's why you've got your spoon. You can go ahead and use that to scrape at these crystals a little bit. You see how I'm pulling it, pulling them off. And look, I already have a little bit right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the bowl labeled one. And I'm gonna try to go ahead and collect all of those polymer crystals into this bowl labeled one, since I'm using diaper one. Now you may find it easier to use your fingers too, just to scrape it off directly into the bowl. That's fine, whatever works best for you. But you're trying to get as many of those crystals as you can. Now, if you can't get all of them, that's not, that's, that's totally fine. But just get as much as you can. All right, so I got this side done, and now I'm gonna do the side with the cotton. This is a little trickier, because I don't wanna get any of this cotton in here. But there still is some sodium polyacrylate that's stuck to the outside, so I'm gonna try to get that without getting the cotton. All right, so I've finished with this diaper number one. And, oh, there's a little cotton. Look at how much I was able to get out. Look at all those crystals. So that should be able to absorb a lot of liquid. We'll see though. All right, and now we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the diaper two. So as a reminder, you're gonna find the back of the diaper. That's the side with these flaps, a little Velcro. And we're going to cut across the top and then right down the side so that we can get to the meat of the diaper. Now, in case you're wondering why we have different swim diapers, think about how much this diaper gel just swelled up when I added the water. In fact, you'll see later on it's gonna swell up even more as we add more water. And think about how much all of this polymer would swell if I added an entire swimming pool of water to it. In fact, if you ever see a kid who forgot to put on a swim diaper, you'll know, because it's gonna be huge. All right, so I've got this cut apart now, and I'm gonna do the same thing as before, where I try to get to that layer that's got the crystals in it. So I'm pulling off this plastic layer, because I don't really need that. And here's the interior webbing. And now I can separate these layers in the middle and get straight to those polymer. And again, I'm gonna open it up all the way, trying not to tear it too much. There's a little bit, that's fine. All right, and now I'm just gonna take out all of these polymer crystals and add them to bowl two. I've got all of those polymer crystals out. And now let's take a look. It looks like diaper one had a little bit more in the way of these crystals than diaper two did, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because we don't know exactly how much water each one is going to absorb. They might be a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead and test that out. I'm using my quarter teaspoon scoop, but again, you can use whichever spoon you have at home. And I'm just going to pack it in so that I can make sure I have a good measurement. I don't want a lot of air space in these crystals. 
and I'm gonna add it to bag one. They're a little sticky, but there we go. So I'm adding that to bag one. I'm gonna go ahead and close it up. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with diaper two. I'm gonna scoop it out, pack it in a little bit. All right, so that way I know I've got the same amount as I had in bag one. I wanna make sure that it's exactly the same. I'll close that up. All right. So that's a quarter teaspoon in each of these bags. And now we wanna see how much liquid a quarter teaspoon of each of these crystals can absorb. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my one teaspoon scoop. Again, whichever spoon you have at home, that's fine. I'm gonna use my one teaspoon. And I'm just gonna start adding some water in a little bit at a time to see how much it can soak up. Right, so I'm gonna add another scoop. Let's see how this goes. And, no, nope, it looks like it can take a little bit more. Give it a couple seconds and then, oh, I'm starting to see a little bit of water trickling out. Let's see if, a tiny bit. See there's some water coming out now. All right, so that was 19. So if that was 19 teaspoons of water that was absorbed by a quarter teaspoon of sodium polyacrylate, this, this polymer, then that's gonna be 76 times the volume of water it absorbed into the sodium polyacrylate. So that's pretty impressive. Now let's see how this other one compares. So again, it's the same amount. We've got a quarter teaspoon, but it might absorb a slightly different amount just based on how the manufacturer made it. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. few seconds and we're still doing okay see a little bit of liquid at the bottom but let's just see if it comes out up oh, there we go you see that liquid coming out that water all right so that has reached saturation it means it can't absorb any more water all right so I actually got the same number. I got 19 for both diapers. So that means that they absorb about the same amount per crystal or per a volume of crystal, but they didn't have the same amount of crystals in them, right? Remember that diaper number one had a lot more crystals in it than diaper number two. So we can already tell just by looking that diaper number one is probably gonna absorb more water. But what if we got slightly different numbers? Then we might need to do a little bit of math to figure that out. And if that's the case for you at home, no worries, I'll walk you through it, show you how to do it. So we're gonna start off by measuring the amount of crystals that we have left for each diaper. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure those into this pie tin. So I'm gonna measure the same way that I did before, just with a, a scoop and make sure that I'm packing it in to, so that we don't have any air space. So that's maybe one teaspoon, a little bit more. All right, so there we've got one teaspoon. Now 
let's do, it looks like we have enough for at least another teaspoon. So here we've got a second teaspoon. It really had a lot of the polymer in it. And now we're gonna see if there's enough for one more teaspoon. And it looks like there might be. That's a third teaspoon right there. It says three teaspoons, and then I'm gonna go to my smaller scoop, get a more precise measurement at the end. And that's a quarter. And then remember, we already put a quarter teaspoon in that bag. So that means there were three and a half teaspoons of the sodium polyacrylate crystals inside of diaper one. So three and a half teaspoons. Okay, now let's see diaper two. Let me go ahead and measure that out. Okay, so we have one teaspoon almost. It looks like it really is just one teaspoon left in here. So that was one teaspoon plus the quarter that we already put in the bag. So one and a quarter teaspoons for diaper two. So, now we're gonna do a little bit of math. We already figured that out, that a quarter teaspoon of polymer can, from diaper number one can hold 19 teaspoons of water. So that means that one teaspoon can hold four times that much, or 76 teaspoons of water. Now, if we had three and a half teaspoons of polymer inside of that diaper, and each teaspoon can hold 76 teaspoons of water, that means that the whole diaper could hold about 266 teaspoons of water. And for, for context, that's gonna be over five cups. So it's gonna be, let's see, somewhere around this much water. Now I hope you would never need to hold that much water in a diaper, but it's good to know that it could. All right, now for diaper two. We already figured out that it can hold the same amount of water per teaspoon as diaper one, but there's a lot less of it. So that's 76 teaspoons of water for every teaspoon of polymer crystals, but we only had one and a quarter teaspoons of polymer crystals. So that means that we could hold 95 um, teaspoons of water in that. Now that might not sound like a whole lot, but that still is about two cups. So that still is about this much water, which is still a lot more than you would probably ever need. Now, I also noticed the diaper one was a lot bigger than diaper two, so that's another difference. Maybe it was for an older child. Now, again, your numbers might be different based on which diapers you have at home, what units you're using to measure, but this shows you how the process of doing this experiment works. So let's review. Today, we looked at how chemistry really is everywhere. We learned about how when you string together lots of molecules, you can make a special kind of molecule called a polymer that has some really, really interesting properties. You have polymers all around you in plastics, hair, rubber, nylon, any of those things, starches, they're all polymers. And we looked at some. We looked at this instant snow, which is used in movies. And we looked at diaper gel, which is used in diapers. Well, thank you so much for joining us for GSK Science in the Summer.